What's going on everybody and welcome to episode 10 of the Wealth Journey series. Today we're going to talk all about my paycheck routine and we're going to jump straight into it. So as you guys know, my very first priority when I get paid, especially during this time of the month, right now it's the middle of the month and the day that I'm recording this video is August 15th, which happens to be my birthday. 29 today. It's crazy. We're getting a little too close to 30 for comfort. But anyway, during this time of the month is when I have the most disposable income. And during that time, I like to really prioritize making my money grow. So that's what we're gonna be focusing on today. So first and foremost, before anything even came out of my paycheck, including taxes, money went straight into my 401k. So I had $412 total going to my 401k, which automatically means that my company put 206 in. So $618 total went into my 401k. So as you can see on the screen here, that puts me at $83,107.29 cents for today. So it's always going to be a great feeling to watch your money grow. I've only had this 401k account for just a little over five years. So you can see how much it's grown over so little time. That's why I'm always saying y'all got to start with your 401k, especially as early as possible in your 20s, because it grows like crazy. And I'm not even in my early 20s anymore, but when I did start this account, I was 23 years old. So that's a real life representation of what just a little over five years looks like in a 401k. And for those of you who are watching like, well, 29 minus 23 is six, not five. Yes, that's true. But I was 23 and a half when I started this account. Anyway, we're going to jump into the next one. The next thing that I put my money into was my savings account. We're not talking about my high yield savings account. I am taking a break from that. Right now, I'm just focusing on my regular savings account. And I have it automated. So as soon as money hits my checking account, 500 is automatically going over to my savings. And that just makes it easy to remember, very easy to manage. I could definitely do more than $500. But right now, I'm really cutting back to see where my gaps are. If you watched my last wealth journey video, episode nine, where I was specifically talking about sometimes when you make a certain amount of money, you start to get not reckless isn't the right word, but you start to get a little more loose with your money in terms of just how often you're able to spend it and how often you're willing to spend it versus when you were tighter on money previously. And sticking with the number of $500 and having that automation, it makes it so easy to manage because sure, I could put more than $500 in my savings, but sometimes I just get lazy and don't feel like cooking. So I door dash way more than I should, which if you stick around to the end, you'll see what I'm doing now to permanently fix that problem problem without deleting DoorDash, of course, or something will pop up. Last month, I just got bad luck. I had ply and fabric poking out of my tire, had wear and tear on all four tires. It was time to just exchange all of them. So sometimes more expensive things do pop up. I'm always ready for them. But at the same time, I don't want to get overzealous and put like seven, eight, nine hundred dollars in my savings account and then end up taking money out of the savings just to pay for something else. You get what I'm saying? So just know, that even though you see me coaching people, you know that I have my one on one consultations, you know, I have my book, you know, I have this whole platform where I teach people how to get better with money. There are levels to this and just understand that even where I'm at. I am constantly working to improve the level that I'm at, which the stage of finance that I'm in right now is just investing wisely and, and doing the correct things with my money and trying to get over the fact that I'm very comfortable right now money wise, but sometimes I get too comfortable and make unwise decisions, which I put on full display for you to see. But we're getting away from that and I'm gonna share with you a really cool strategy on how to get out of that mess. But first we're gonna talk about the third place I put my money in, that is my Roth IRA. I put $700 this morning into my Roth IRA. So as you can see on the screen right now, I have $18,408.76 in my Roth IRA. And as of this year, which is 2024, I put in $4,200 total into my Roth IRA. IRA. And the reason I changed from putting $500 a month into my Roth IRA to $700 is just so I can hit the max limit, which is $7,000. Doing $500 wasn't going to get me there. It was going to get me to $6,000, which is still great. But I made a commitment to myself at the beginning of this year, and that was to max out my Roth IRA for the first time. So I've committed to $700 per month for the rest of the year going straight into my Roth IRA. Now I'm gonna share with you a few strategies that I'm working on right now that I'm really excited about that I haven't thought to do before for some reason and I feel kind of slow for not doing it, but that's okay. Life is all about learning and 
I'm definitely learning right now and hopefully this can teach you something very valuable in just a few seconds. So the first thing I'm working on doing is building a bigger buffer in my checking account every single month. That's part of the reason why I'm not putting a ton of money into my savings. I'm just giving it a limit of 2000, but in between that time, I'm stacking money up in my checking account, which I actually got some inspiration by in one of my previous videos that I made a week ago. And that's in my video where I talk about signs that you're financially stable, even if you feel like you're not. It's a very good video. I definitely recommend you check that out after this if you haven't already. But the reason I say that is because in the very beginning of that video, I'm sharing my screen and there's just a quick Instagram reel. And there's a guy up there talking about how to build wealth basically from start to finish and what it looks like and what it ends up building up to. And I hadn't heard of the method before. It's called the cherry method. And basically it starts with the checking account and building that up. So I'm not trying to build $6,000 like he was recommending in my checking account, but I would like to have a larger buffer than I normally have. So I'm working on that a lot more and I'm also practicing some restraint because sometimes when I'm tracking and logging my expenses, some things get about excessive now and you know it's food. You know me by now, you know it's food. You never really heard about me splurging on shoes or clothes or video games or TVs or even computers, nothing like that. It's almost always food, but we have this thing now called Apple Pay. Some of you have Google Pay or other variations of this, and I believe the same method will work for you just as well. But I use Apple Pay. And one of my coworkers said, yeah, every month I have a certain amount of money that I wanna put on gas, so I just put it on my Apple card. Well, I guess it's called Apple Cash or whatever it's called. I'll put a picture on the screen of what this looks like so you can just see what I'm talking about for my specific situation. But in my actual budget plan that I have for myself, I have budgeted $200 and $200 only for DoorDash. I have proceeded to double, triple, and quadruple that. Don't ask me how, we don't need to ask questions right now. I done told you, I like food, that's how. Anyway, we're leaving it to 200. The way we're gonna do that is I give myself a $200 limit by putting $200 on my Apple card, which I will show on the screen. And it's extremely simple to do. And now whenever I order from DoorDash, when it has the Apple Pay option, I just link it to my Apple Cash, boom. Now I can just use that card guilt-free until the $200 is bowed out. Once that's bowed out, ain't gonna be no more DoorDash. And there's a few reasons for this. One, even though I'm feeling good about myself and I'm doing well financially right now, I need to be more intentional about saving. I need to be even more intentional just because once I hit my savings goals, I'm throwing a lot of money into my individual investing account, which is Weeble. And I haven't invested too heavily on that account since 2022. And as a matter of fact, I haven't even touched that account since 2023. And we're not talking December 2023, we're talking like middle of the year 2023. So my goal right now is to open myself up for even more success in the future. And my YouTube channel is starting to pop off a little bit with certain videos I've been posting, which I've been noticing. So I have way more ideas now and way more content coming. I'm gonna need to about upgrade my computer. All that DoorDash money I spent <laughs> this year, I could have been on bought three, four, five of the computers that I want, which happens to be a MacBook. So all in all, I'm aiming to be a little more responsible so my money grows a little more in the future per month to have a massive impact in the next two to five years. And I'm so glad I'm recording this journey and showing it all with you because you're gonna watch it happen in real time. You're gonna watch all the successes and all the mistakes all in between. So anyway, that is where I put my money for my paycheck. The rest of it is literally just sitting in my checking account right now. Of course, I have other bills, groceries, and things, but I wanted to specifically focus on how I'm making my money grow and how I'm saving my money this time around. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth. I appreciate you, and I'll see you in the next video.